So here uh, we are talk about OpenStack and its integration with Tungsten Fabric. So just a show of hand, how many people have heard about Tungsten Fabric? Okay, quite a few. Good, 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 good. So for those uh, uh, who have not heard about it, there will be a little refresher here. So what, what are we gonna cover today? Uh, first of all, let's introduce ourselves. So I'm Sukhdev Kapoor. I'm a distinguished engineer at Juniper Network, and I'm also on the technical steering committee for Tungsten Fabric. And uh, with me is uh, Christoph. Why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Sukhdev. I'm Krzysztof Gajkowski. I'm a director of engineering um, from Codyline. And in Codyline, we are a software house doing uh, software for the network related uh, projects and I've been working with Sigde for some time for uh, the project we are going to show you today. Yeah, so, uh, so Tungsten Fabric is an SDN controller which is a uh, very heavily production deployed uh, uh, SDN controller and uh, we've been trying to get it uh, to run with ML2 for a while it runs as a monolithic plugin, and we took it upon ourselves, two of us, and with the help of a few others, to bring it uh, with ML2 so that uh, you can run different kind of workloads. So, so we're gonna talk about that. So I'm gonna start out with the uh, brief uh, architectural overview of Tungsten Fabric, some of the features uh, which uh, Tungsten Fabric offers, and, uh, and then we'll get into the actual live demo of uh, what we're gonna show, okay? So having said that, let's uh, get going. So tungsten fabric architecture, okay? So everything really in tungsten fabric works with the, uh, with the logical view of uh, management of the networks. So if you look at the top right-hand side, right? So so you see two virtual networks and, and you see different types of workloads. So the concept in tungsten fabric is you create ports and you attach anything to the ports. You can attach a virtual machine, you can attach a pod, Kubernetes pod, you can attach a bare metal machine, you can attach a top of the rack switch, doesn't matter. No. So you, you, you create ports, you attach attach any type of workload to it and you put it in a network and you define the policies. You simply say, okay, these workloads belong to this network, these workloads belong to this network and, and then you simply define the policies. You say, okay, this policy, you know, this network is allowed to talk to this network or I'm gonna deploy certain uh, services. So th these workloads should talk to thi this workload through this chain of these services. So that's a logical view. So that's how the entire uh, tungsten fabric network management works, right? So now, uh, in reality, uh, what happens is those, so I'm gonna start from the bottom and then I'm gonna work my way up on the slide. So in reality, what happens is those workloads which I just talked about, they can be anywhere. Th they can be sitting in a, in a same rack next to each other. They could be sitting 20 feet apart. They could be sitting cloud apart. They could be sitting miles apart. They could be on a different cloud. They could be in your uh, on-site premises. They could be anywhere, it doesn't matter. Still the same concept. You create a network, you know, wherever the ports are, wherever they are, they are living physically, you simply say these ports or these workloads belong to this network and please apply this policy and, and we'll take care of everything. So in this case, so what we're showing is on the right hand side is a V router. So hypervisor, uh, everything is in tungsten fabric uh, V router based. It's not an OVS, it's a layer three. So you don't require additional routers when you're using a tungsten fabric. So the router everywhere by default. Okay, so, so V router runs in a hypervisor which is the one which is managing all the policies and all the, uh, the flow of data from uh, which, uh, which workload is allowed to talk to which workload. So that, that gets managed and all the policy management 
at a distributed level. And, and uh, like at the bottom it shows it could be running in Azure, it could be running in Amazon, or it could be running in your local data center, it doesn't matter, right? So, uh, and on the, uh, on the left hand side of the screen is your, uh, your bare metal machines. So again, you have a, uh, you have top of the rack, you have a bunch of uh, uh, bare metal machines. So they get treated exactly the same way. So physically they're living differently, but logically they belong to the network and therefore based on the policy, uh, they'll all communicate. So now the core of the, uh, of the SDN controller is uh, the, uh, the tungsten fabric controller itself, okay? So that's a centralized entity, right? Uh, which has a configuration, it's a single pane of glass, w one place where you configure all your policies, where you define your deployment, and that's one place, uh, uh, that's a configuration. The control plane is distributed. So it's, it's, it's logically, uh, again, central, one place. That's where all your BGP policies, all, all your prefixes, all, all your routes, everything gets decided there and get distributed and passed on to reroutable agents on different nodes, okay? And analytics, same way. End-to-end -end full visibility into uh, what is happening uh, anywhere whatever is being managed. So, so those are the key uh, components. And then when you go north of it, that's an orchestrator. Okay. So orchestrator can be OpenStack, it could be Kubernetes, it could be anything. So some, some top tier uh, providers uh, have their own GUI, which they run on top of it. So it doesn't matter, it's all REST-based APIs. You come in and, and, and uh, you can configure whatever you want to configure. So, so those are the key components. And, and if you notice uh, on the right hand side of the controller, there is a loop with the BGP. So the, the, the controller works uh, in a federation mode. You can horizontally scale it to as much as you want. It will, it will scale. Some of the people are uh, running this into very, very large deployments. So there are 35 plus million mobile workloads running in production networks. There are some tens of tens plus thousand uh, bare metal machines are being managed in production uh, with, with this SDN controller. So it's a fairly powerful. Uh, at the bottom, uh, at the center is a gateway. That's how you get in and get out. And we again, we use BGP uh, standard uh, IP fabric to get in and get out. So that's a basic uh, high-level uh, overview of the architecture. So here is a V-router architecture. So V-router sits in uh, every uh, hypervisor. Okay. So in the previous slide, I showed that the, uh, the control node, which I was sitting on the t showing on the top, that talks to the V-router agent, which sits uh, on the uh, local, uh, every compute node which is being managed by Tungsten Fabric. Uh, V-Router is running there, and it deals with the configuration, the WERFs, and the policy table. So I'll touch a little bit basis on the policy table and explain to you how powerful the policy framework Tungsten Fabric has. So essentially, you have virtual machines running. Uh, you have a kernel. Uh, uh, the, uh, sorry, the V-Router runs in a kernel, right? And that's your forwarding, uh, forwarding plane. So the packets come in, you know, or packets, pack, packets which are going out, they are encrypted, which are coming in, they are decrypted based upon uh, VXLAN, uh, VNI, or, or MPLS label. They get passed onto the appropriate routing uh, instance, and that's how the traffic moves in and out uh, uh, of a given uh, hypervisor. So that's a basic uh, crux of how the forwarding uh, plane works, okay? So having said that, now the by default uh, V-Router runs in a kernel mode. So that's like if you install Tungsten Fabric as is without any uh, additional configuration, that's what it comes as. Now for, for higher performance, if your applications can support BTPK, it does support that. So that will give you much higher support. In that case, uh, the V-Router runs in a user space, 
and it uses DPDK library and takes full, full advantage of DPDK library. You can also run in, uh, in a hybrid board where uh, the, 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 the V router will run in kernel and, and you can leverage if you have the DNFs which can support SRIOV workloads, uh, you can leverage them, they will run in a hy hy hybrid board, right? And this is where you will get a, a, a somewhat a better performance. You can leverage the SRIOV workloads here. And uh, the lastly is uh, the smart to cough load. So in that case, the V router itself runs in, the, uh, in, a, in a NIC and it completely offloads your CPU. So now you, have, uh, you can fully utilize your CPU. This is where you can get the highest throughput. Uh, that's like if you're using edge deployments or, or, or remote compute situations where, where, where you have a need for low latency, very high throughput, that's the right uh, way to go. Right? So those are the four uh, deployment models. So one thing which I didn't touch so far is that uh, the tensor fabric not only uh, just deals with uh, the virtualization of network, it deals with the full-blown uh, fabric management as well. So it's a zero-touch provisioning. Uh, not only it will, uh, it will deal with the bare metal machines, it, it will deal with the life cycle uh, uh, of the bare metal machine. It uses Ironic underneath to deal with that. Uh, but it can also uh, fully provision the switches and routers and, and the leaves and spine switches. So everything, so essentially you connect it, uh, connect the pieces, uh, I mean physically wire the uh, pieces and, and then you come in and provision it and it will configure all, everything for you. So, so it's a single uh, uh, SDN controller which will work for your uh, virtual machines, pods, as well as bare metal machines, right? So it, it works with Kubernetes, it works with OpenStack, and, uh, and, it, give, uh, a and uh, it deals with your edge deployments. One thing which I didn't touch, because we, we I didn't come here to talk too much about Tungsten Fabric, but I wanted to give a little bit of a primer, but it, we do have a multi-cloud support that Tungsten Fabric will deal with multi-cloud. You can run uh, with the same controller. You can manage multiple sites. Uh, you can run multiple edge sites or multiple clouds. So either one. So, so that's what it is showing here. And uh, so, uh, so another thing which I wanted to touch is I'm not going to read this list. So in addition to the basic networking, <coughs> It does have a lot of advanced networking features, and they're listed down there. So it's fairly uh, fairly rich, and a uh, lot of people, uh, I've been uh, contributing to Neutron for the last seven, eight, 10 years, right? So a lot of people have always asked, hey, you guys have a lot of features, why don't you upstream them? So it's like nobody has really spent some cycles to do that. So. So if you're using pure OpenStack-based deployments, you will miss out, miss out on some of those features. But for those features, we usually typically will configure them from, from Tungsten Fabric to Bui as opposed to from OpenStack Horizon. Uh, but some of those things are we are trying to bring into OpenStack, and that's one of the things we're going to talk about today. So here, uh, this is one feature which I wanted to really touch bases because this will uh, this will hit the home run uh, as to what kind of capabilities uh, Tungsten Fabric, uh, in terms of the policy framework, can offer. So here is your typical deployment scenario, where where you have uh, a three tier application which you're developing. Let's say a financial app, right? So you have a, uh, you have a web portal which your customers are logging in and then on the back end you have an application which is managing the app real application and you have a database so you're developing it you're staging it for the for deployment and you are running it in a production so for all of these you you have a, s uh, a policy which you will define how the workloads can talk and what not and so what we said was 
uh, instead of having a separate policy uh, for each of the stage, why not have a single policy which can, uh, which can deal with regardless of what staging, uh, what, what staging of the deployment is, right? So it reduces the complexity, simplified management, and improves the scalability, right? Now, once you define that policy and you define uh, uh, for, a, uh, for any type of staging for an application, now at that point, when you're scaling it out, it doesn't really matter where you're scaling it out and how your cloud is growing. You, can going, you could be going into Amazon Cloud, you could be going Kubernetes and Resource, or bare metal server, it doesn't matter where you're going. Once you have defined a policy once, uh, it will just seamlessly apply anywhere. And like that's, this is what I was sort of emphasizing in my first slide when I mentioned, like doesn't matter, once you have these ports and you have put them into networks, doesn't matter where the workloads are. You know, just based upon your policy, it will manage, it will deal with the, uh, how the workload workflows, uh, workloads can uh, communicate. Uh, that's, this, is, this is what I was referring to. Okay, so here I'm gonna give you a very uh, quick uh, use case example. So here is the same app, which is in the development stage. So the policy says on the top, allow HTTP traffic between web tier and an app tier, right? So that's your one single policy which you're defining. Now you have a development stage where web can talk to the application. And, and, and now you have in production as well. So based upon the policy, it says, the application can, uh, the web can talk to the application, doesn't matter where it is. So whether it is in the development stage or it's in the production stage. So now if you say that, no, I don't want my developers to be messing around with, with the production deployments. So their developers, they shouldn't be mucking around with the, uh, and screwing around with the, with the production. So here is, you simply say you match the deployment and that's it. So, so what, does the, what does this policy do is, now, it says, you know, the, the web can talk to, talk to app, but, but only in a given, uh, so, so we have these bunch of these tags, which are standard. You can define your own custom tags, or you can build any kind of policy for them. You can define and build any kind of rules around that. And now let's say it's a, uh, distributed uh, geographically. So you have two sites, and again, the same deployment. So you have, developers running at two different sites and, and they're developing uh, uh, the application or whatnot. So the same policy, so nothing changes. The same policy applies. It says the web can talk to the app anywhere as long as it's in the same uh, deployment. So over there is a deployment, this is deployment. So it will, it will just work. And now what if you wanna prohibit that? You say no, uh, we don't want, uh, Sorry, I uh, clicked twice. So, so, so you say, no, I don't want to allow that because of geographical reasons or what, what, whatever. I, I want only local deployment uh, to be able to talk. You just simply match the site. So now based upon the site, it will restrict. Otherwise, the policy is exactly the same. So this is how you can control uh, uh, your deployments. So now, at this point, I assume, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you an example, a real life example. Let's say this is, a pr uh, this is a financial, large distributed financial application, which, where, which is where the web, s web servers are running behind, the, let's say, hundreds, hundred networks. And, and similarly, the app networks, because they're geographically distributed, running under 100 networks. Now you imagine, trying to configure these policies using OpenStack uh, uh, security groups. Okay, <coughs> how, many, how, many uh, how many lines of configuration? The new man is uh, smiling here, so he knows exactly what I'm talking about. So, so, so imagine you will require pages and pages and pages worth of configuration or the policies which you would have to write to manage that and how much error prone that would be here you just need one simple policy. And, and you know, 
what happens once you have, let's say you have the deployment going, it's running, it's working, 100 networks each. Now you add, add a site and now you have to add another, let's say one more network, 100, one network. What would happen? You have to go back and, and reconfigure a lot of crap if you're using security groups. Nothing changes here. You reduce it to 50 network, you add another 50 network, nothing changes. The policy was once defined, that's it, it's gonna work. So this is how powerful this policy framework is. And, and now here is another example of, uh, uh, here, uh, here you're allowing the applications to store database and, and the policy says, store it locally. You know, you allow, doesn't matter where the application is running, which stage it is running in, you know, it, it should be able to write to the database. And again, this time, you simply match the site and a local site should be able to push data uh, anywhere you want. So, so I just wanted to touch, just wanted to give you a little feel of why this is so powerful, uh, SDN Control, why a lot of people uh, like to use it in the production uh, deployment. Yesterday, uh, you know, uh, I'm gonna quote a gentleman sitting in the <laughs> room. Uh, if you were watching the uh, keynote uh, speeches yesterday, right, from CERN, you know, and, uh, uh, and, and Tim Bell mentioned he's using Tungsten Fabric for, for their cloud with their building. You know, right now they have a very small site, 3,500 uh, servers with 35,000 virtual machines and the plan on expanding it to, to 15,000. So afterwards, you know, if you, you know, I'm gonna chat with him and you guys can chat with him and see you know, uh, how hard or how painful it is to grow from smaller deployments to larger deployments. So it, it scales really well, you know, so it, it, it makes a lot of sense. So, so those were the good features. So now, uh, by default, uh, uh, Tungsten Fabric uses a monolithic plugin. This, is, this goes back into the time when, when Neutron started and most of the plugins were monolithic plugins. So the, so, so the Tungsten Fabric started as a monolithic plugin and it never bothered to move once the ML2 days uh, uh, plugins came came by. It never bothered to uh, do that because it was so so widely used into the productions. A lot of people were already running it in production network. So people never bothered to move move forward. But here we have taken uh, an attempt to do that. So 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 if you are not familiar with, it, if you have not heard about it, or you are not uh, you have not seen it. There exist uh, in open open dev uh, 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 GitHub uh, network uh, networking open contrail. It used to be tungsten fabric used to be called open contrail. So it's just laziness on Christoph and his team's part that they have not changed it. I've told them several times, hey, let's change the name, but it's still sitting. So you, this tells you how lazy some of us are because things are like just working, and you know why why mess with it. So networking open contrail, you can go uh, see it, it's, you can play with it, you can download it, you can deploy it. He's gonna actually show you the whole thing running. And, and what this does is, uh, so in the previous fun monolithic plugin, anything else you wanna bring it in, you have to come through us. So we will, we will integrate it, we will give you one fully packaged solution. With ML2 base, now you can run anything and everything you want. So in this demo, which Christoph is gonna show you, we're gonna actually run uh, Open V switch as well as SRIO V drivers from, uh, from OpenStack. And then we're gonna also run uh, uh, networking open contrail uh, to manage the fabric, uh, uh, the, uh, the tungsten fabric. So we're gonna show you three types of workloads. So SRI, we go VS and V router based workload communicating. And then we're gonna go one step further. So we're gonna do a live migration of workloads from OBS to V router. So we're gonna show you how easy it is to, you know, not your, your, your typical standard Nova, Nova migration, but Nova migration really works from OBS to OBS, right? So here we, we can actually go 
from uh, OVS-based workloads to the vRouter-based workloads. So if you have legacy deployments which are running on OVS and, 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 and you want to cut over to vRouter, uh, vRouter-based, so it makes it seamless. Oops, it's clicking too fast. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so running uh, tungsten fabric, so this I sort of touched all, uh, already. So, so what this facilitates is by, by bringing an ML is uh, you can run free uh, workloads simultaneously. Another thing which you can do, which is interesting, which is the second bullet here, right? So tungsten fabric, in when I was describing the architecture, one thing I mentioned that it will do the full fabric management. So if, for example, if you don't want to use tungsten fabric to manage your virtualization, you can use it to manage your fabric, and you can run uh, uh, OVS-based workloads, you can run SRIV-based workloads, and use fabric, uh, tungsten fabric for fabric management. So this will uh, also do it for you. So that facilitates it. Uh, and, and, and of course, uh, I'm going to show you live migration. Here is the link which I was talking about. So you want to pull the code. It, it's there. Whatever he's going to show you, whatever he's going to run, he's going to be running directly straight out of the uh, out of that GitHub. There's the nothing forked. So we're, we we never work with any forks. So everything is straight from from upstream. Having said that, now I'm going to pass it on to Christoph. Please step up and and walk through the demo and uh, sure. take over. Thank you, Sigdiv. Yes, no problem. So, uh, hello. So this is a simplified uh, overview of our setup. Uh, Sigdiv mentioned the steps we're going to perform. So we have three nodes in here, uh, which managed by the OpenStack. And the first node is SRIOV uh, deployment. Then we have uh, OVS, and on the right hand side is uh, vRouter. And they are connected. Um, we use VMX as a router, uh, but it could be any router. We just use it because we know it very well. And uh, the network configuration is um, something I won't go into the details in that, but you can use any router you wish. And they are all connected to external network. We use KFX there. So. Besides showing the connectivity between all those VMs, I will show the migration. And the migration, as Sukhdev mentioned, will, will be from OVS to Tungsten Fabric. Uh, <coughs> all those VMs uh, will be in the same network. It's for the simplicity. And <coughs> I'm going to create new VM to migrate. Uh, I wouldn't be, I would not have to do that, but I want to show that I can move the OVS VM to Tungsten Fabric and then uh, see if the connectivity still works. So that's why I'm creating new VM here. So the demo. It's here. Okay, so uh, L2 connectivity uh, is, as I said, mentioned, uh, done in the VMX. Uh, we just use uh, instance type EVPN, uh, which is basically a switch. Uh, we connect SRI, V, and OVS using the VLAN uh, type connection, and uh, vRouter, uh, we use VXLAN. So this is for, for the L2. For the L3, it's a little mo more complicated. Uh, we use uh, 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 instance tab type uh, virt router in the VMX and we connect their uh, uh, SRI OV and OVS VMs. And uh, from the vRouter, uh, it's a little much more complicated because we use MPLS over GRE uh, to connect to VMX and then we interconnect, interconnect them together in the VMX. This is the part of the network. It's not important for the demo. Okay, so let's create new instance. The first one would be uh, the OVS uh, instance. Uh, so we just select any source, any 
and it doesn't matter. Oh, here we select the predefined network I was uh, speaking just about before. Uh, we call it uh, SRA V255 is the 50-50-50 network. So the instance is being launched. It has been given the address 231, 50, 50, 50, 231. And now we are creating the router instance. Yeah. We'll choose the same network. Because the source key doesn't matter. Yeah, so OpenStack is managing the, the router and it assigned the VM the address 50505076. So our ML2 plugin works. <coughs> so let's create a SRIO v deploy uh, VM right now. Yeah. So uh, here instead of network, we select the previously defined port. It's in the within the same network as the rest of the VMs. Okay. So all three are, are in the same network. Wait a minute. So yeah, it's there it is. Okay. So let's see how it is the how it looks in the tungsten fiber. Uh, we can see it in here in the network. We can uh, see if there's an if the there really is an instance. Oh yeah, there it is. 76 50 50 50 76 is the same IP as in OpenStack. So yeah, it really works. Let's let's do the connectivity test. So first, uh, we can we uh, connect to the console to the OVS instance, and we'll we try pinging uh, other instances. Let's try ping the the router. It's a fifty 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 seventy six. Yeah, it works. So OVS v router connectivity works. Uh, now let's do the SRIO v ping. It's two hundred. Yeah, it works again. Uh, let's check the internet. It's simulated by 162.0.1 address. Yeah, it also works. So I won't I won't show you the other pings from the other between other uh, VMs. It's too boring, but I sh assure you it works. So let's do the live migration scenario. So as a reminder, we're creating VM migrate in the OVS and uh, move it, migrate it from the UI uh, to the tungsten fabric, to the router. Yep. So again, create VM. <coughs> so it's fifty 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 one eight three IP address. I can check it in tungsten fabric that there's only one previously created VM. So we expect the new crea newly created VM to appear there, but right now uh, we can double check if this is really in OVS, and you can check it here in the uh, virtual interface tab field. For example, here it's OVS, right? But it's going to change soon. <coughs> so yeah, so it's a uh, it's a node three. It's the name. We click Live Migrate button there, and we choose the new node. It's node four for uh, this is the V router node, and just click so click submit.
So it's standard OpenStack mechanism. We didn't do like much with it. Um, it's now migrating, uh, so what we expect is the IP won't change, um, but the node here uh, will change to zero outer. Yeah, there is it. So it's done. It moved. So let's check the uh, interface type again in the OpenStack. It's a V-router here. But let's check uh, the V-router. Maybe OpenStack is wrong. Go to the network. And okay, here's the second instance. 5050-5184. Let's view the connectivity there. Let's try to ping uh, this place. LVS, yeah, it works. So the newly created VM that is in a V router now uh, pings the uh, LVS and pings the V router VM that is beside her. And then um, SRI AV <coughs> are also working with this 200 address. And now is the internet again. So it works. So the application looks complete, there was presentation. So at this point, I'm gonna open it for question and answer. But so, so you, you get the gist of the idea by, by bringing Tungsten Fabric to ML2 into OpenStack, it opens up th this world for it. So all those features which I was describing earlier, you know, so, so you, you, you have them all, and now you can mix and match you can run multiple SVN controllers. Uh, if you wanna run uh, ODL with Tungsten Fabric, be my guest, you know, try it. In fact, somebody was in China trying to do that. So it's available to you. I showed you the code, it's up there. Play with it, contribute. Uh, we're looking for people to come and contribute to it. Help us uh, make it in, uh, you know, even more feature rich. If you can think of any use cases which you would like to bring it on board, come on, welcome. You know, this is all open source. Tungsten Fabric is open source. ML2 is all open source. Everything is open source. So nothing is proprietary. Only thing which we use proprietary here was uh, the switches, uh, Juniper switches, because I work for Juniper. All those switches are free. I can use them. Otherwise, I have to spend money, you know. So other than that, uh, everything was open source. So anything I can, uh, or we can answer for you at this point? Um, talking about smart mix, uh, what cards do support V-router offloading? Uh, uh, currently, uh, we're working with multiple vendors. So I don't know whether I should be throwing out names or not, but any, any big vendor, mix vendor you can think of, they are. So I mentioned earlier, I'm a, on a TS, uh, I'm a technical steering committee for Tungsten Fabric. We have defined an API for any NIC vendor to become compatible with. So there is a certification. So any NIC vendor can come and comply to that API and it will become compliant with. So, but if you're talking about commercial licenses, you know, if you, so the commercial version of a Tungsten Fabric is Confair. So if you come to Juniper, and you say I want to deploy it in production, and I want I want a, I want a commercial license. So we have a commercial. So Netronome is uh, the choice. Mellanox is another one. Intel, all of these guys, uh, uh, they are all tested. They are all uh, verified uh, with with tungsten fabric. Yeah, and 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 either one of them is work. You can pass it on to him. He had a question too. First of all, I can name your vendor later. Face to face, <laughs> if you are interested, really, I can tell you a vendor that, that works. <laughs> but that's not my question. <laughs> so uh, the driver name is Open Contrail, and it, you didn't mention that it was split to Tungsten Fabric and Contrail Correct. by Juniper. So what so we did was when we yeah. moved to the open source, <laughs> right, so we, t we wanted to keep the same name, Open Contrail. So Juniper has a, a, a commercial product which is called Contrail. So when we moved it under Linux Foundation, Linux Foundation legal created an issue. They say open contrail and contrail sounds very close. Either you give up uh, the copyright to contrail or we're not gonna let you have 
open conflict. So then the community, the Tungsten Fabric community got together. They, they actually voted. A lot of people proposed different names. For some odd reason, Tungsten Fabric was chosen. And that's how it got the Tungsten right, Fabric. That's not my question. Yeah. So how that's do you see the future of Tungsten Fabric? So who will contribute to that? Sorry? How do you see the future of Tungsten Fabric development? So community is growing. Uh, in fact, uh, there is a there is an event, uh, uh, Tungsten Fabric event. We are kicking off uh, formally uh, Tungsten Fabric in China, in Shingdao. Uh, it's like an hour and a half flight from here. So I will be there, thir uh, it's on Thursday, right? Thursday, right? So, so there are uh, roughly 150 to 200 people who are planning on uh, attending that and, and, and they, wanna part, uh, they wanna become a part of this. So apparently, there is a huge uh, 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 demand here uh, in China. People want, so those guys are pinging me. They have passed over time. So, so I'll okay. stick around, we can talk offline so, so that we can free up the stage for the next presenters. So, okay. yeah. so, so there is an event, so please uh, do show up. It's actually on the Linux. If you go to Linux Foundation, the main web page, and you go look at the events, it's listed there. So it's a Tungsten Fabric China event. You can go register. It has the, f the full.